we are on our way to Randolph Plantation, um, also known as Roanoke Plantation. And this is um, in Randolph, Virginia, which is Charlotte County, Virginia. And we're going to the plantation, um, the land from where my ancestors were freed uh, officially in 1833, but physically in 1846 because John Randolph's um, will to manument them was contested until 1846 when they finally won. So we're going down there. I need to have this pilgrimage experience. My friend Angie's with me. Therefore, I will not fall asleep on the road and I'll have some company and she will get to also experience this journey with me. Um, so this is important to who I am as a person, but also my work, my life work. Um, of telling the reparation story because um, so during those 13 years that we were that my ancestors were still enslaved and um, you know waiting for justice to be served um, there was some shenanigans going on in Ohio which is the in Mercer County, Ohio, which is the land that John Randolph purchased for them. I'm ashy. It's fine. It happens. Um, 3,200 acres of land in Mercer County, Ohio, which covers uh, St. Mary's State Park and Lake St. Mary's and um, in that surrounding area. Um, the German settlers uh, had taken over the land and formed and by the time they got there uh, the freed people um, settlers had formed an armed militia threatening to kill uh, John Randolph's freed people they would not leave the land and it would have been around like summertime 1846 so Anyway, um, the state sanctioned that violence against my ancestors and allowed this militia to violently rob. Um, hey, Nay, I see your hearts. I can tell it's you, even if it's little. Um, they allowed them to um, violently rob uh, my ancestors. I'm going to try to bring you on camera. Nay, I'm bringing you on camera on there. I don't know how to do this, but we'll see if it happens. I wish you could have came too, Nay. It was, hey, Nay. I mean, sure, I look a hot mess. You look but... amazing. You look pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm at work right now. And you're at work right now. I am. <laughs> you're killing it. You're always killing it. Welcome, my daughter, JC Morgan of Create a County. Um, I love that you hopped on here because this is, you know, I'm doing this for you and Aww. yeah, and Christian and Aaron and our lineage and I don't know who's, Nate, can you help me see who's also joining or who's like watching because I can't see. Yeah, I can because oh. I think that was Lisa. Oh, hi, Lisa. Lisa just joined. <laughs> so we're oh in God. Mount Hope, West Virginia right now. Oh, okay, okay. And I was just telling so how, how much longer do you have? We're four hours away from Randolph Plantation. Four hours? Yeah. Hey, Tiffany. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I'm doing the work, too. That's so exciting. Oh, I just wish I could have came. I but I know that you're going to collect all the information. You're going to get all of the experiences and tell me about it. I'm also going to FaceTime you so you can be there with me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, I, yeah. so I can like, you know, show, show you in real time what's happening. I missed the beginning. Did you tell the story? Yeah. Um, I was right in the middle of talking about, Hey, Lisa Cave, um, a Kelly Montgomery, you're welcome. Um, I was right in the middle of telling them how the German settlers um 
were armed, formed an armed militia to force us off of our 3,200 acres of land and how the state sanctioned that violence against us by allowing them um, to use political methods like their little memorandum saying that they would not vote for anybody who would uphold John Randolph's will. So I was right in the middle of telling them that. Um, okay, Tiffany, I will. I will. Tiffany said grab some of that soil. Yeah, absolutely. Don't judge my food choices. I was starving to death. I don't want to hear. I will. <laughs> I will, Tiffany. Um, so yeah, we're going to get a tour. And then when we leave the plantation, we're going to take the pilgrimage from Randolph Plantation over to Mount Pleasant and hop on a route that travels along the Ohio River, which is the river that they took to get to Cincinnati. Um, I might post a picture of that Cincinnati article later. I'm not sure yet. Um, yeah. Yeah. Someone wrote, Definitely. what'd you say, name? Yeah, post a picture of that. Um, and then, yeah, I'm just excited. I'm so excited to see the pictures. Yeah. I'm going to FaceTime you <laughs> while I'm there so you can... <laughs> I'm a little nervous. I don't know what's going to happen to my soul when I step on that land. Hey, Mama Collier. Um, I was just telling the story about how we're on our way to the plantation where our ancestors were freed. And we're going to take a pilgrimage. We will be going through Piqua on our way to Mercer County. Um, there was a time. Hey, Dwight. I love you. <laughs> Dwight. Send Dwight some love, you guys. He just went through a hard time losing his phone yeah. so please send him some love so much documentation that's why i'm doing this live and i will continue to do them and um i will tiffany i'll keep i'll document the heck um out of this. i'm looking for a micro center so i'm gonna be using my phone but i also need to um hey dd i also need to get a find a memory card for this camera um so i can get as many pictures as possible um but yeah we're gonna yeah. take the pilgrimage we're gonna stop in piqua because as the story evolves we would have stopped in piqua along the miami Erie canal oh you in montego bay <laughs> tell carmen i said hi to dwight you deserve it um yeah we stopped in piqua on the way to mercer county and in 1846 and the Piqua people were like, oh, there's a water shortage. We don't have enough water. So. But like our ancestors, we, we are not the first people to, to go about working to get this land back. Right. Like we, I, we've been working, our family's been working since day one. Right. And I think that just shows like why we are such hard workers and so determined and passionate about everything we do because that's how all of us are. Yeah, you're right, Nay. We come from that, don't we? You know, um, our grandma and um, Nicole Burton's mother, um, both, both our grandma, Charlotte May Olden, which is her maiden name, Charlotte Mae Raglan and uh, Nicole Burton's mother. I'm so sorry right now. I'm messing up trying to remember Nicole. You're, yes, hey, Charlize. I'm talking about our situation. Um, but yeah, they both uh, filed uh, documentation in on um, September 23rd, 1991 um, to ask the state to repair and restore and return that land to us and our money. It's 3,200 acres. Um, and so each of the each of the um, state legislators wrote Nicole's mother back and um, Dorothea, thank you, Dorothea Burton. Thank you, I'm so glad I remembered. Um, saying you should obtain an attorney. Well, also in history, we have we have obtained attorneys and they've lost the case under the statute of limitations, which is dumb because it was illegal regardless. But there's a precedent being right. set now. So, you know, in LA County, um, the Bruce's family are gonna get their land back. Yes, 
Yeah, Charlize. Um, yeah, Aunt Pearl. Aww. Yeah. Aunt Pearl has talked about this. So, you know, we're just going to continue the work and, um, you know, be steadfast until we see justice. Yeah, absolutely. Our next goal is to hire a um, civil rights attorney, right? Yeah, we need to find a, we need to find a reparations attorney. So your documentary is going to help fund that. Mm -hmm. It's going to also like, the document. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So that's why this is so important. Yeah. We're Stokely. Stokely's at home. Um, I had to cry them off my chest, okay, <laughs> because I need to come back to work. I have a huge project due tonight, really, and so I had to come back to work. Oh, Nay, you're such a hard worker. You guys, pay, you guys, if you want your books kept together the right way and your accounting done the right way, hit up uh, Create Accounting, um, my daughter, J.C. Morgan. Do they need to do they need to be in Ohio? No, Char uh, Charlize, they can be anywhere in this country or in the world at this point. Okay, hit me up. Charlize says she may have a connection. And also, can you inbox me or tell us on this thread what happened in Louisville this morning or yesterday with the 16 year old? I saw your post while I was trying to get ready to leave. Um, and also, by the way, defund police and abolish police. Okay, reimagine pu public safety without police. But Anyway, yeah, they like to keep killing black people, and the only way to stop that is to cut the money. But um, anyway, somebody is doing a thing with their, their motorcycle, but okay. Nay, thank you for all the work that you do. Yes, thank you for all the work that you do, and I will see you tomorrow. Okay. No, I won't. You're going to be out of town. Well, I'm going to go. I'm going to FaceTime you so that you can be there with me while we're on the land. Okay. And he's going to give us a tour, so I'll take you on that tour with me on FaceTime. Okay. And then you guys... Text me, text me so that I can make sure I'm free. Okay, I will. Okay. Because we're working on Saturday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, she said, yes, there was a shootout, and a young 16-year-old man was an innocent bystander. I'm so sorry. That's really sad and terrible. Oh, well, prayers up for his family. All right, you guys, I'm going to go because we need the sun is setting and we need to keep driving for a little bit before we find a clean place to sleep. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to um, let y'all go and I'll come back tomorrow and give you an update. Um, okay. Before I leave the plantation now, and I'll give you, I'll FaceTime you so you can be there. Okay. Okay. All right. See ya. Okay. See ya. Love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. This is Rona River. So my, I'm going to make a guess that William Lee might have. I mean, they're leaving, so maybe they're coming. Well, here I'm getting my glass back, back together. West. And I got me a ticket to a way. It's been a long time since I needed to find me some space. So please don't take my leaving in any person no way. But I gotta get up and get moving. And I'm heading out today.
um, caught a tour of Roanoke Plantation, which is also the Randolph Plantation. It's called Roanoke Plantation. It is owned by a humble couple, um, Tim Willis and his wife. Tim gave the tour today. It's just, you can call. We are allowed to call him, and he willingly and joyfully gives us tours. He gave us a ride on one of his little, like, four-wheeler things, and we went. We drove around the, you know, we drove to the edge of um, Roanoke Plantation through, we went from the winds, from the, up the hill, and they build the houses and plantations on top of hills so that they can get um, gusts of wind that cool them off because people don't have air conditioners back there. Um, the lower lands are where um, they used to grow tobacco. Um, so the lower lands on the plantation, not the ones uphill, but the lower lands are where they used to grow tobacco. Um, that was the money crop, the cash crop. And then there was cotton and corn. Um, they still have leftover, I mean, they still have corn on the land. They also have cattle and goats. Sorry, you can probably hear me, hopefully you can hear me better now. So, um, if you didn't, if I, I can't tell if you can hear me, I'll go back and edit this video later. But the, so, hey, Cicely, oh God, Cicely, you asked me a question and I haven't had any sleep. So if you ask me a question, like, how is my heart? If I try to answer that right now, um, You know, the bottom line is that my heart is good. We're on our way. Um, this is the part of the journey where we, um, this would, what the part I'm thinking about is on May 4th, um, 1846, went 13 years after John Randolph died and his, um, and he, and he, he had manumitted made provisions financially to set free monument um, his entire plantation of enslaved people my ancestors um, it took 13 years because the family contested the will so this would be the day that they were leaving that they got to leave the plantation so we went to visit we got to see it um, so so because of that, like, because of this part of the journey, I have reminded myself um, to feel joy because that's the part that is promising. It's on its way. We are, I am on my way to a land that was promised to me, um, that was purchased, that was bought, um, so that I could live and flourish in this land. Um, but it's a complex and layered, like, the truth is, we know that that's not what happened. And because of that, m my story today is different. Um, but yeah, Cicely, there's so many layers of the answer to that question, but, and then the shit that I brought with me emotionally when I came here um, just because of life being who life is but right now I feel I feel like I feel hopeful that um, I'll be able to continue to explore this story um, I you know I tell the story a lot I've been telling my ancestor story um, since I think 2013 and that's a that's a pivotal moment 2013 I stayed I went on a, a retreat um, to Oberlin Ohio 
and that retreat was um, my friends gifted me that uh, I'm looking at my lighting just trying to see where I look crusty um, I went on a re retreat to Oberlin I used to work for the state of Ohio this is my second career I have after you know during before during and after um, earning my degree in HR I was working for the state for a stretch and I that felt like working on a effing plantation I'm saying effing because mama's probably watching this and I don't want to cuss for the Saints but that state job felt like um, I worked for a plantation I had learned Spanish that's how I got the job in the first place and then worked my way up and then got a degree in HR and I still uh, felt enslaved to that so I went on this retreat Martin and Kristen um, bought me this retreat in Oberlin Oberlin um, I'd like for you to google that Oberlin Ohio is an abolitionist city um, established by Quakers in 1833 which coincidentally is the year that John Randolph passed away and the year that my that my ancestors thank you Michael <laughs> Thank you. Um, that my ancestors uh, should have gone free, but they didn't. Anyway, um, magnolias is what we're talking about right now. So um, that's one of the first things I noticed when I got to the plantation that they had magnolia trees. But the reason why I'm saying that that is significant is because in 2013, when I went on this retreat, I stayed in this room called the Magnolia Room at um, the Ivy Tree uh, bed and breakfast in Oberlin, which was also built in 18, around 1833. And I like kind of halfway fell asleep and I had, oh, you guys, this is hot take information that's gonna show up somewhere else later. But um, I got on this retreat, fell asleep, had this kind of dream thing where a woman and I know like a senior woman was at my door um, saying please I'm out here with no shoes on I could see her even though I was on a the other side of a closed door so the bottom line um, so the rest of the story you can read in the book but the bottom line is the name of that room that I slept in that night was called the Magnolia Room and so it felt affirming um, to pull up onto the plantation and see those magnolias those magnolias grow quickly so they were most likely not planted when my when Johnson Crowder my seventh great grandfather uh, um, was enslaved on that plantation but you know still pretty cool to see it um trying to think what else I can tell y'all you guys have any questions for me so while, while you're typing your questions so we went down to the lower lands and in the lower lands that's where they're growing the that's where the tobacco and the cotton used to grow and the corn grew all over there too but also the corn grew on the up the hill and then at the very end of the lower lands is a river and it's called Randolph River, I think. Um, and it leads to Randolph, Virginia. So there's, the Randolphs were like, there was a lot of them and they started um, coming to the US from England in the 1600s the mid 1600s um, so all around the Randolph area um, it's like a it's a broad area and so is the Roanoke area which obviously goes beyond that plantation and beyond Virginia into North Carolina So, um, you know, while, while there, I just tried to take 
whatever moments that I could um, to connect and just kind of envision um, what life might have been like at that moment, but also prior to that moment um, in the previous generations when maybe their chattel quote unquote merchants um, were not as kind, I guess, a uh, word I can use as John Randolph. But anyway, at the, you know, proverbial end of the day, we are on our way to Point Pleasant, which uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia, which is the point in West Virginia that meets the Ohio River. And then we're going to um, follow a, a, the closest route along the Ohio River over to towards Cincinnati, um, Ohio, where you'll get the, you'll hear more about where we um, left the land, got on a boat, got on the Ohio River and came over here to, went over there to Ohio to head up the Miami Erie Canal to occupy our land. And I guess since we all know the, you know, what happened up until now, that um, violent people took their land, my, the purpose of all of these, you know, continuous efforts are, just has to do with um, fixing, repairing that story. So, um, I would bust out singing, but I don't feel like it. I'm sleepy. Maybe next time, though. Hey, Jolie. It says I don't, oh. It says I have three viewers, but I can't, I can't see who y'all are. But, um, hi, everybody. Hello. I am, I'm at the Ohio River. Um, I just crossed into Cincinnati from Kentucky. And... I am, hey Dave, hey Leslie, I'm on um, uh, the last part or two of the journey. I am sola on this one. Um, Angie ended her um, accompaniment with me um, over at the um, Northern Kentucky Cincinnati Airport. So, um, on this last um, this last stretch that kind of is in two parts, I get to do that one. Just me and um, me in the heavens, y'all. Um, so I'll show you. I'm, I'm on the Ohio River right here. There's a really cool place to come down here and just look um, at the riverfront in Cincinnati. So I will. Uh, I'll go up. So um, by the time that um, my ancestors got to this part, by the time they got here, they. Um, they they marched through downtown Cincinnati where I am and uh, there were like 395 or so um, of them 
and uh, I say they marched because that there were a lot of they were a lot um, a lot of people. Um, so there's an interesting article written about the the way that that impacted um, this city where I'm standing now, downtown Cincinnati. The way that it impacted uh, the people around when close to 400 freed black people were marching, you know, walking through downtown Cincinnati after having um, disembarked from the Ohio River and headed to the Miami Erie Canal, which used to run in the 1800s from Cincinnati to Toledo, um, but it is not in use anymore for the most part. But there is uh, still a piece of it up in New Bremen, Ohio, which I might not do today. I might go to St. Mary's instead, and there's a reason why. And I'll, you know, I'll go live again when I get up there. But uh, like I said, I am on this journey, this part, this this last uh, day, this Ohio section where I'll go from the Ohio River and instead of using the canal, since it doesn't exist anymore, um, I'll, I'll be following the Great Miami River, which is, you know, which runs alongside where the canal used to run. And it runs right through my hometown of Piqua, where, um, where the, the freed people stopped on their way to Mercer County before they finally got to Mercer County, you know, at the, what they thought was the end of their journey, they stopped in Piqua first, um, but were not allowed to disembark because the city uh, decided that they suddenly ran out of water or didn't, they had a water shortage. So um, I'm gonna follow the Miami River from Cincinnati up through Piqua and then um, follow a road that might've been the path of um, the canal down Riverside Drive out to St. Mary's um, to to get to what part of what could have been my people's promised land and then I'll symbolize their eviction and they're being forcefully removed by going back to Piqua to Rossville where we will have settled and then you guys That'll that'll conclude uh, my first attempt, and I just want to highlight the word attempt um, at a pilgrimage. And whew, I say attempt because um, uh, the devil has been busy <laughs> on this journey. Um, it has been, uh, I did this journey in messy conditions. And, um, and by devil, I mean a series of my own choices um, uh, before and after and during this trip. But, you know, I love me a clean, you know, hero's journey story. Um, this ain't necessarily that, but... I don't want to um, draw too much attention to the interference, except for just to just to confess that yes, it, there has been some. Um, and in addition to, you know, me, but um, thank you for the heart. I don't know who sent me that, but I appreciate you. But y'all, uh, you know, it is well. So I'm going to say a prayer at, at this here Ohio River and join the great Miami River since we no longer have a Miami Erie Canal. Um, and I'd like to share just a little bit from, from what I remember of the article that I read. And if you're interested, you know, I can I can post that article. It you it's hard to read. You'll need magnifying glass, but um, because it's a microfish. But you know, it was a great and terrible sight for 
the people in this town to see um, several hundred freed black people um, looking unbothered um, on our on our way somewhere with triumph in our eyes triumph in our eyes so um so someone wrote about it and he was he was pretty pretty much blown away and I'm just honored to be um, standing here where somewhere near where they ha may have exited these waters and got on the ones that were headed to what would have been our promised land I'm also honored to be on this part of the journey by myself sola and able to um, hone in on this on this last um, few hours that I have um, in memory of my people so thinking about the river asking it to carry me so I'm gonna go find me some food and hit the highway and I will see you guys again when I get to Lake St. Mary's Hey guys, hey. <laughs> um, so I have arrived at Car, it's, the locals call it Carthagena. Um, it is Cartagena, Ohio. And I just wanna show you, um, this is an abundant land, you guys. It's abundant everywhere out here. It's lush and green and full of beautiful crops. I am at the cemetery because I want to show you how, um, uh, what's going on here. So, hi Leslie. I have made it to Mercer County. Um, I am at the Carthagena or Cartagena uh, Black Cemetery in Mercer County. And I found this place on the last pilgrimage that I took here with Mr. Larry Hamilton. Hey mama, um, we are in Mercer County, I made it. On my way here, I was just thinking about, um, I was just thinking about how excited they must have been when they were headed here up the canal. Um, how they must have been talking to the kids, telling them about how they would have their own places to play and they would be free and not have to, you know, beat their hands bloody knuckle and bone and they could earn their own living and, and sell in commerce and trade and they must have been very excited. Um, and I was just trying to hold on to that hope that, that they had before they got here on the way. So I did make it. Uh, as I said, it's a very, this, this Mercer County is miles and miles of rich and fertile crops. I am, I'm at the Black, the Carthagena or Cartagena Black Cemetery. And I just want you to notice that, um, I'll turn this around. They separate, there's the white cemetery over there. St. Aloysius Cemetery. And then this one where I'm standing is the Carthagena or Cartagena Black Cemetery. There is a brick wall uh, built between them because God forbid that a black dead body somehow touches a white one. Um, so this has become a uh, historical location and I just feel very honored to be here. Most of the people, most of the people who are buried here in the Black Cemetery, they um, died of cholera. Hey, Mr. Hamilton, I'm here. I'm here at the Carth Carthagena um, Black Cemetery. This is the one. I should have asked you to join me. I say see more it won't let me see more right now but yeah I should ask you to join me but you're the one who brought me here the first time and so I'm telling the story about how 
you know, we're divided here, even in death, because they didn't want to touch us. But I wonder how, if they were surprised when they were got where they were going in the next life, and there we were. So here is the um, historical marker for the Cartagena Black Cemetery. I'll just read it. The Cartagena Black Cemetery, or Union Cemetery, is a remnant of approximately seven documented rural black, 70 documented rural black and mulatto rural settlements established throughout Ohio before the Civil War. After the Cincinnati riots began against blacks in 1829, Quaker abolitionist Augustus Waddles led 15 black families north in 1835 to settle in Mercer County. He bought 189 acres in 1837 and set aside this cemetery by 1840, the date of the oldest remaining headstone. In 1840, early mulatto settler Charles Moore platted the village of Cartagena. Mulatto clergymen Sam Jones and Harrison Lee were underground railroad conductors. By 1860, about 100 black and mixed race families totaling 600 people, owned more than 10,000 acres in the adjacent townships of Butler, Franklin, Granville, and Marion. Four Protestant churches, the earliest in 1841, and three schools were built in the Black Settlement. So, um, sadly, that did not include my people because when we got over here, um, our lives were threatened um, so I don't know, I don't know what's going on. I don't know about the, the, uh, signal out here. I am out here in the sticks, but this is it. 3,200 acres of this should have been, um, cultivated by, uh, my ancestors. And I imagine what our economic stability would have been like had our had our resources not been robbed um but it's not too late because it's never too late um so at this point we would have been um hey vera <laughs> at this point we would have been forced to get out and they would have um issued a memorandum to all of the politicians in Ohio uh, threatening to re withhold their votes. Yeah, they, yeah, it's, it's a newer, um, Leslie, it's a newer um, marker. And so Mulatto was probably obviously from back in the day and then mixed race was later. Uh, what was I saying? Oh, they issued a memorandum to the politicians of Ohio threatening to withhold their votes. Um, and so it worked. The state allowed the ancestors of the people that are all around me um, occupying and cultivating this luscious land, allowed them to go ahead and violently um, push us off of such beauty. And that ain't right. I think it's a shame. So I'll continue to tell the story. I have one more stop because I um, want to talk to you about Piqua, where I'm from. So I'll see you guys again when I get to Rossville, where we settled. Um, give me back. And it's looking real sundownish out here, and I'm feeling a sundownish townish vibe <laughs> so i'm gonna get on up out of here and get over to piqua and i will see you guys in a little bit thanks for following hey this is it i'm here i'm in rossville this is where my people settled the randolph settlement in 1833, John Randolph from Roanoke, Virginia, died, leaving three wills that requested all of his slaves be set free 
and that land be purchased for them. Although contested for 13 years by his family, the slaves, which I like to call enslaved people, were freed and the executor of the wills, Randolph's cousin, Judge William Lee, purchased about 2,000 acres of farmland in Mercer County in Ohio. And I've shown you what some of that farmland looks like. It's amazing. Uh, traveling by wagon train, the freed people, 383 in all, reached their destination in 1846, but were forced to turn back by earlier established white settlers. They turned around and ended up north of Piqua, where they purchased land and developed the village of Rossville. And that's where I'm standing now. Later, some moved on to other places in Miami County, as well as Shelby County. In Rossville, they established an African Baptist church in 1869, cemetery in 1866, and public black school in 1872. Mr. Hamilton, is the African Baptist Church the the one that you currently attend? Uh, Called something actually else? Actually, the Af African uh, Baptist Church here in Ro Rossville uh, divided into two. Churches. You're on live, by the one way. One became the Cyrene AME Church, and the other became Park Avenue Baptist Church. And that's where we met when I was born and started going with my grandma. Absolutely. So we are at the historical African Jackson Cemetery right now. And I just wanna, um, this is Mr. Hamilton, Mr. the one and only Mr. Larry Hamilton. He um, has been tirelessly um, working to um, instill this knowledge into people here, our people, and help us to understand what our rights are and our our heritage uh, over here um, on the other side of the marker the African Jackson Cemetery members from the following families are buried in Jackson Cemetery um, and it, it lists various names and I'm going to name them uh, the last names are Anderson Armstrong Valley Basil Blackburn Bray Brown Butler Kane Clark Clay, Coles, Crowder, which is me. Uh, that's my great, 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 great grandfather. Delaney, Fowlis, Giles, and look up Goodrich Giles when you get a chance. Gillard, Gillum, Governor, Hill, Huggard, Hughes, or Hugs, Hughes, Hunt, Johnson, Jones, Kendall, Langdon, Lee, Mitchell, Musco, Nickens, Parsley, Parson, Randolph, Reese, Ryle, Roberts, Rocco, Ship, Smith, Taylor, Tibbs, Truss, Vix, White, Williams, and Wilson. The following Civil War veterans are interred here. Pierre M. Bray, John Kane, Henry Clay, Johnson Crowder, that's my seventh great grandfather. He uh, fought there in the Civil War. As, as did the other veterans I'm listing now, William Kendall, H. Parsley, John Taylor, Sidney Vicks, and Philip White, born a slave and died free. So that's what's going on. Um, Rossville is outside of Piqua, so it's not even inside of the city limits and therefore not maintained or cared for by the city. So I have a dream of buying this place so that I can hook it back up and make it gorgeous. Um, and the bigger picture is, you know, they owe us some money for 3,200 acres uh, that they uh, that they sanctioned to be robbed from us. Mr. Hamilton, do you have anything you want to talk about? Yeah, I think we need to assign ownership identity to all of those who came before us and are buried or and I'm not looking for anybody else to do that other than us. We have a responsibility and an obligation to care and love our ancestors in the manner of the struggle that they were involved in on our behalf. That's so right. 
let's let's honor them with ownership identity and uh, uh, res resurrect the uh, uh, tombs and uh, uh, memorial tombstones that should be here that are not. Yes, they were vandalized, which is why they're gone now. So, yes to that, and yes to reclaiming ownership of everything that belongs to us. It is ridiculous to be on this soil and have having, um, sorry, sorry, Sarah. He already said that, so I apologize. Um, yeah, he was talking about assigning ownership and letting that be our responsibility. Um, so yeah, this is why I'm from Piqua. I used to wonder the same thing. I want to say thanks to Allie Collier, who's watching, um, affectionately known most of my life as Mama, and also Jay um, Mantle and Trisha and Voss for, um, for your gifts today. I appreciate that. Um, made it easier to do this last leg. And um, to all of you who are the reason that I was able to drive um, lots of miles, like 2,000 miles to and from Virginia to do this, to do this pilgrimage um, over the weekend. And just very, very, very grateful. Uh, so I'm gonna, it's getting dark and we're in Rossville. Are we gonna do any touring while we're in here? Or? Okay. Um, I do wanna show you guys I want to show you guys uh, the museum that I would like to um, restore. Would that have been the canal there, a part of it? Okay. So I'm going to take a picture of that and I'll send it to you. I want to thank you guys. Uh, whew, the bugs. I won't be here long because uh, I didn't put no bug spray on and they out here eating me up. So um, thank you for following. I'll wrap up with some closing thoughts later tonight when I get home out of the elements and, um, to be continued. Thanks again. I love you guys.